Hi. We're going to start a project today that's one of my absolute favorites. We're going to use paper mache and we are going to make these human figures. So everybody is going to pick an emotion and you're going to show that emotion by the way your person is posed or the colors you use. Here is my example. I chose the emotion inspired. Nobody can choose the emotion happy or sad, but if you can't think of an emotion, there will be a list inside this lesson of emotions you can choose from. Now, these human figures have to do with two concepts. Gesture. When artists talk about the word gesture, we're talking about how a figure is posed. You can tell a lot about how somebody is feeling by their body language and their gesture. And that's what this project's about. And the second concept is color psychology. Colors make us feel different emotions. Some excite us, some make us sad, some make us calm. Some even make you angry or anxious. This concept is used a lot in advertising and logos for different companies and restaurants will use um, color psychology in their advertising. There will be a link to different pictures that show different meanings of color within this lesson. If you can understand those two concepts, you can do a project, you can make a project that shows an emotion in a sculpture using gesture and color psychology. These look absolutely fantastic when they're done. You can all do this. I've seen you guys work. And we haven't done a lot of sculpture yet this year, so this is a good opportunity to do so. I hope you like it, and I'll talk to everybody soon. So we're going to make this person out of tin foil. We're going to use three pieces of tin foil, about a foot and a half long each. Now the first thing I'm going to do is crumple up the tin foil into these kind of long sticks, long ropes of tin foil. I want to make it as thin as possible. Don't twist it too much because sometimes they break that way. I'm just kind of rolling it and kind of crumpling it together into a long roper stick. I'm going to do that three times. You want to push it together pretty compactly. Um, it should be pretty thin. So then I'm going to take one of them and I'm going to make kind of a V-shape by bending it right in the middle. And then I'm going to take another one and do the same thing. And then I'm going to put those two together like this. And then with one of those um, tinfoil pieces, I'm going to start twisting. This is going to make the body of our person. Leave a little bit up at the top. That's going to be our head and how we get the, the arms in. Squish the pieces of tin foil together so you know that they're pretty secure. You know, you got to press pretty hard. And then I'm going to put the third piece of tin foil in for the arms. And then I'm going to twist together the head at the top. And there is our basic person in tin foil. Now, these sculptures look a lot better if you give them things like feet. You know, bend down some of the tinfoil for feet. Let's give them knees. Let's give them elbows. And let's even bend off a piece for the hands. It's just going to make them look way more realistic when your sculpture is finished, if you do that kind of stuff. After that, you can bend them into any kind of gesture that you want to. And it is as easy as that. To make this tinfoil person. So now that I've got my armature, let's paper mache over it. So what I'm using is called Art Paste. It's a product by Elmer's, but there's other stuff you can use. You can use liquid starch or glue and water, um, or even flour and water. So I'm going to dip my paper inside the Art Paste or whatever I'm using, and then use my other hands and squeegee it off. Then I'm going to start applying it to different parts of my armature, different parts of my figure in its gesture. I'm going to wrap it around as tightly as I can. You want about three layers. And smoothness counts. It's a lot easier to paint if we can put it on smooth. And we will be painting these later. So I'm going to keep applying the paper mache until I get it over my entire armature. 
Now, I'm being careful that I'm getting places like the ends of the feet, the ends of the hands, the top of the head, anywhere where there is a tin foil, because I don't want the tin foil showing at the end. Neatness counts. These are just a lot easier to paint if you put it on smooth. So taking a little bit more time at this stage just makes the painting and the finishing of the project so much easier. So, you know, go for it, but, you know, take your time. So this art paste is going to dry and harden, then your um, armature, your gesture, your guy will be stiff and um, it, you'll be able to have a good surface to paint on and it'll be, um, it'll stay in one place better. So take your time at this step. It is a very important step. You can rip the strips of newspaper into smaller pieces if that's easier for you. That was easier for me to cover some places in this that are kind of tricky to hit. Remember, if you don't have the, the uh, art paste, you can use a mixture of flour and water. That works. Um, it's a little bit messier, but it does harden up really nice. You can also use liquid starch or a little bit of glue and water. So there's other things you can use other than the art paste. As you finish it, as you finish covering the entire um, armature, the entire person in the gesture, Make sure you're posing it exactly like you want it to dry because the stuff will um, harden up and it'll be harder to move it into the correct gesture after it's hardened. Um, so make sure that you are putting your guy in the correct gesture that would make your emotion. Now, while it's still wet, it's okay to move it around a little bit. Maybe you need to bring an arm up so you can get into the armpit or something like that. That's okay. But once all the paper is on, put it exactly like you want it to dry. While it's wet, it's okay to move it around a little bit. Say you need to get under the armpit with a piece of paper. That's fine. But after that, leave it to dry. Now we are going to paint them. And I want you to think about the different emotions that the colors give off. I will include some resources so you can match up different emotions with the colors. But let's look at this one. This is an old one from one of my students from years ago. It's put together really nicely. The paper mache is done nicely, but the paint job. I don't think blue says joy to me. Blue can be calming. Blue can also be sad. But I think more like yellows and reds and oranges when I think joy. So think about that when you make yours. So now that mine is dry, I'm going to paint it. Uh, my emotion is inspired, so I think I'm going to use a lot of warm colors with that. I am going to use a lot of warm colors. Um, red means excitement, and um, yellow can be um, bright and exciting too, but it can also be anxiety. Um, it can also make you feel anxious, and I think there's something about that when I feel inspired. I'm also kind of anxious in a way. So I'm going to use that, and I'm just putting on a base layer, and I'm going to paint over this base layer later. Cover your whole sculpture. There should be no newspaper showing. If you do want to paint a base layer over it, you may have to let it dry before you can add anything else. I did that, but now I'm adding other colors on top of my base layer. Now, over my base layer of warm colors, I'm putting different shades and tones of purple. Now, purple is a color that doesn't really exist in nature very often. It's kind of rare and exotic, and um, that's what I'm kind of thinking about with to be truly inspired doesn't happen as often as you would think. So that's why I'm putting that in my sculpture. So I'm making my lines of different purples, just kind of twisting around my body over my base layers, my excited base layers, because being inspired is still exciting. When I said shades and tones earlier, I mean um, a tone is when you mix white in with something and it makes it lighter. A shade is when you mix black in with something and it makes it lighter. If you want to mix gray in, it's called a tint. Um, just some technical words about painting. So now that I have my figure painted, I'm going to start painting my base. I'm just using a piece of cardboard for this. I am also going purple, but I think I'm going to make some different tints of purple. It's mixing white in with the purple, and, uh, and then I'm going to let that dry. Now, you don't have to only use paint on these. I think I'm going to use Sharpie for some of this, and I'm going to write uh, my emotion on my base, so inspired. Now, you can be just as creative with how you um, put in the lettering. 
as you can with the whole sculpture in this. That's also important. But I am going to use Sharpies for this part, and uh, you can do that. If you want to paint it, go for it. Um, but uh, I kind of like um, how I can be more exact with the Sharpies for this, so that's why I chose to do it. You can also think about the color psychology, the colors you're using when you are doing your base and when you are doing your lettering. So think about that. So I'm putting more of my warm colors in because it's to be inspired is exciting. And I should put some oranges and stuff like that in there. Take your time with this base too. This um, can make or break your project. I've seen some great projects that just had really sloppy bases and just kind of a word written on really sloppily. It kind of ruins the project. So take your time with this too. Now, I will have different sizes, pieces of cardboard um, cut, just ready for you guys to use in class. Um, and remember, you don't have to paint it. You could also use something like pastels or something that works really well, and you can get some good colors with it. But, you know, take your time with the base. It also doesn't have to be rectangular. I'm going to cut off my corners here. Um, and before I do that, now, after I'm done with that, I am going to hot glue it on. Maybe you need some help with it from an adult. But there you go. Now, this says inspired to me. I hope you um, and your sculpture say whatever your emotion is to you. And I really hope you like this because this is one of my favorites. Bye, everybody.